physiotherapist with Know Your Body Better and I'd promised somebody I would talk a bit about the knee because I haven't done any videos on the knee and so I thought I'd do one for this month of June and we're getting close to the end and what you're looking at for my hair is three almost three months without a haircut because of the COVID-19 crisis so I thought this would be a good day to do it because I actually done my hair this morning and it was looking good so I thought we could do one today so we're getting on to the topic of the knee uh, I want to show you first this is the femur bone oh here comes my dog he might want the femur bone hi Bauer how are you doing you come say hello to everybody so the femur bone is the top thigh bone it's the leg bone and this is the lower part of the knee and this is where the kneecap tracks in here and it's grooved it's bigger on one side than the other and it's a groove and it usually tracks medially and then laterally and this is the other part of the knee this is the tibia so we've got the patella here and then we have the fibula bone it's a very thin bone and it slides back and forth and then we have the tibia or the shin bone and this on top of here are where the meniscus are people often say they've torn a cartilage when it's actually the meniscus they've torn the cartilage is the shellac type covering on right on top of the bone the meniscus are rubber rubbery type um, cartilaginous substances that attach this is one on the medial side the inner side are you supposed to be up here buddy okay the medial side and then the lateral side and when your knee bends into flexion so that's the bending or extension the kneecap glides in that groove there but the meniscus also move forwards and backwards a little bit and if they get little tears in them they'll get caught and then the knee when it just it doesn't just flex and extend there's a little bit of a rotational component to it so when you're kicking your legs straight there's a little external so it rules out movement and when you bend your knee it rules in and if those meniscus get too compressed so the muscles get tight so it's like squishing the muscles together we get increased pressure increased grinding and you can also tear a lot of meniscus tears happen when the knee gets twist with a pivot with pressure on it and so what we really want to do is keep the muscles supple so the joint isn't getting overly compressed and the muscles that we need to keep supple are the thigh muscles the hamstrings the calf muscles and the front shin muscles so when you're looking at stretching your front thigh muscles there's a couple ways to do it one is just in standing and if you have your you can hang on to a chair but you can just put your foot back on a yeah, on a chair so you can get the front stretch this way so the foot's here and as i bring my hip forward i get more stretch through the front quadricep muscle but we don't want the knee way out like this because then you're not getting the stretch of the side one you want to make sure you bring your knees a little bit more together so you can get that front some people do the standing where they stand and hold like this but when you're doing that we want to make sure we're not arching the back like this so i like the foot on something especially as we get a little older we want the foot on something that way so when we're looking at stretching the hamstring or the back muscles here uh, what i often will get people to do is sit with their one leg straight and you're leaning forward a little bit like this so you lean forward to get the hamstring the back of the leg your back stays and your chest stays up because if we round like this we're not going to get the hamstring we'll get a stretch in the back but not as much in the hamstring and if you're a little bit too tight for that you, know, you can actually you know sit you can't really see it this way but you sit with your foot out like this and lean forward and again keeping the head we don't want this pokey chin posture <coughs> you want your legs straight out so you can be sitting and doing that one when you're doing your calf muscles the ones at the back of the leg you know those are we want to bring you up the foot the foot up here to get that calf stretch a lot of times they're done in standing and I'm going to stand up on my bed hopefully my dog won't follow me up here but the one stretch that I really like is the foot up on something this might be a little bit more solid and leaning forward this way to get the stretch in the back of the calf now you can add in a standing hamstring stretch 
and lean forward to get the back of the hamstring. So foot up like this will get the calf muscle. I usually like this to be a bit more solid and then leaning forward to get the hamstring. A lot of times when we're looking at the knee as well, again, there's a tracking problem that we, we look at. And the tracking is often that people, when they go to do a squat or bend, their knee tracks in. And sometimes that be mechanical, but a lot of times there can be weakness through the hips. So I really get people to practice, if they're going to do any squats, to squat by sinking their hips down and then making sure that their kneecap stays over the second toe. So we don't want to see squatting like this. As you see in a lot of women, actually, we want the squat to be down like this. And if you're tightening the calves, this is as far as I can squat before I can feel my calves firing up. So that means I'm tight there. Now the one muscle we often forget about the knee is this tibialis anterior muscle runs down the front of the shin. And that stretch is really just sitting back on your heels this way. Now, if you can't do this without knee pain, then we know there's tightness in the knee. And this is often will be a sign that there's some meniscus problems as well when people can't fully do this bending motion. Or, you know, if you go down into a full knee bend squat, you can't do this full bend, especially with uh, meniscus. And usually the pain with meniscus is right on the knee joint there. And there's some localized swelling. So if you can't do that one, but we need to stretch that front shin muscle, again, I just go to this, foot up on a stool. I think you can see me here. Foot up here and stretching this front shin muscle. So you don't have to be, my knee doesn't have to be in a full flex position to get that. It's just partly. So those are a few exercises, but remember the squats, we want to make sure the muscles are supple. Strengthening the muscles, the calf muscles don't often need strengthening, but that's a simple, you know, go up on your toes and lower down. The hamstring muscles, I showed you the quads with the squat. The, hi honey, the hamstring muscles are basically, you can strengthen those and work those with a deadlift. So you're bending forwards, that gives the hamstring a stretch and back up. And some people do this with a little bar and some dumbbells. So it's a deadlift exercise and you're working your hamstrings eccentrically as you're lowering and then back up. So those are some exercises for around the knee. Generally, I find that I'm releasing muscles and retraining the muscles around the knee to make sure that the outer quad isn't too tight and the inner quad is firing. The inner quad exercise, it's called the vastus medialis or VMO, the vastus medialis obliquus, is basically a lot of times what we're doing to get that one going is knee over wedge, feeling the inner muscle with your hand and then kicking up. We want to make sure that inner muscle fires. So I might trigger it with my hand and then kick up. Oops. Again, so for the vastus medialis muscle, the VMO, it's this inner thigh muscle. It shuts down when there's just one tablespoon of swelling in the knee. So it's very quick to shut down. So turning that one back on is really critical uh, because if you don't, then the outer thigh muscle does more of the work and tends to get tight. And then that will lead to the improper tracking of the knee. So to strengthen this, this inner muscle, I often will get people to put their hand there to turn it on and you can just tighten them, tighten your quadricep muscle and relax, put your hand there to get it. And almost you're pushing your knee and leg in against it and then do a slight lift of the heel off the bed. So push the knee in, lift the heel off the bed and that gets that inner thigh muscle. You can do both at the same time. Some people can't even do that and we just get them to do the squeeze, hold 10 seconds, relax. Squeeze, hold 10 seconds, relax. So it's just activating that inner thigh muscle. So when we're looking at the knee, it's a hinge joint. It flexes with a rotation and extends with an external rotation. We have the meniscus in there. We have ligaments, which you didn't even touch on and the knee bending with a twist. If the muscles are tight, the tracking will be wrong. If the muscles are in balance, the tracking will be wrong. So too tight, too weak. So we have to really look at balancing the muscles around the knee. And we don't want the muscles to be compressing the knee joint because then you're going to get the rubbing and muscle imbalances around the knee 
and improper tracking around the knee and over compression of the knee can all lead to increased wear and tear of the knee or what we term arthritis, so swelling of the joint. So it's Wendy Bowen, physiotherapist, signing off for now. Thanks for watching. What are you doing up here, honey? Okay, off the bed.